Hello everyone, glad to be with you for youth again this Wednesday. Uh, I have a challenge to start youth this week. The first person who can correctly text me the location where I'm filming this devotion will receive a $10 gift card to Chick-fil-A. Uh, the first announcement this week is that I still remain hopeful that we will be able to have our mission trips at the Hinton Center this summer. I'm speaking with them and they remain positive, so I hope uh, that everything will improve and we'll continue to be able to have those. I will certainly keep you posted as I have new information. Second, graduation Sunday for high school and college graduates will be uh, Sunday, May 31st. Uh, please uh, go to the youth website and click on graduation Sunday and complete the information uh, to give me your, your correct full name and your, your high school you're graduating from and, and what your plans are and how many people will be coming to the luncheon. If we're able to gather for luncheon, we'll have a Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue luncheon after the 11 o'clock service. Um, I'm hopeful that at least the graduates, maybe in their families, will be able to join us in church for service as well. Uh, as we turn to having a devotion, I want you guys to know that uh, you know we're, I'm sure we're all spending uh, time watching TV or on a computer or on our social media, and there are many opportunities to see uh, good uh, videos. And uh, while I know you may not watch every video that I'm doing uh, for youth, I hope you'll realize how important it is uh, to stay connected, and I really do uh, love you and miss you, and I think it's important to reach out. So even if you don't watch every week, maybe you'll sit and binge watch. There's uh, Maybe this is the seventh or eighth uh, little video I've done since we've been uh, quarantined. But uh, I really do love you, and I hope you'll watch. Uh, the devotion I've got to, to share tonight uh, is a lady from Maryland, and she's, she's writing this devotion. <clears throat> the passage is from Second Kings. Uh, ver chapter 5 verses 1 through 15 and the verse itself that I'm going to read is chapter 5 verse 10 and this is about uh, Naaman. Naaman is an accomplished Syrian warrior and uh, he has a leprosy or a skin disease and through his battles he acquires a servant from Israel a young girl and she becomes friends with Naaman's wife and she realizes Naaman is sick and she says if only she tells Naaman's wife, if only Naaman could go to Israel and see Elisha, then he would be healed. So Naaman uh, obtains permission to go to Israel, and he goes to Israel, and he eventually goes to Elisha. And Elijah uh, asks him to do something that seems very minor, to go wash himself in the Jordan River uh, seven times. And Naaman initially can't believe that that's going to happen and he'll be healed but eventually, he goes ahead and he follows the instruction and is healed. So listen to the devotion and listen to this, this, one, this one verse. <clears throat> Elisha sent a messenger to say to Naaman, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. The story of Naaman, the story of Naaman, a leper, reminds me of myself years ago. When I was a young adult, I had some problems with my father. For years, I prayed earnestly that God would show him the many faults I found with him. I was angry and hurt, and he was the only perspective I could see. After I spent years praying with no visible change in my father, it occurred to me that perhaps I was praying the wrong prayer. I began asking God to change me and to give me a forgiving heart. What had happened with my dad wasn't going to change. It was over and done with. I wanted to move on, but I sensed I would not see an improvement in our relationship unless I began this new prayer. The answer finally came. My heart was changed and I forgave. This allowed a new relationship to grow with my father. It wasn't a grand, quick miracle any more than Naaman received a miracle before he had completely finished Elisha's instructions. But the right attitude and following God's direction resulted in a similar outcome. Just as God heals Naaman, he heals my heart too. I think that, that we speak, and I don't think, I know we speak about being in relationship with God all the time at youth and, and being in relationship with each other. I genuinely believe as we grow in our relationship with God, 
our minds begin to see what he sees. He, we see the world the way he sees it. We see answers to our prayers that he's providing all the time. Whereas if we just remain inward, we want quick fixes and cures and sort of instant gratification. While God does do things instantly sometimes, sometimes things take longer. And in all instances, I think what God is doing is drawing us to him. I think he wants us to be connected. And when we do that, we see the world, we see others, and we see ourselves the way he does. And when that takes place, it's the place that God created, uh, heaven and earth. Uh, everything is the same on heaven and earth as Jesus prayed. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I genuinely think that God is working in and through us when we allow it to change this world to be what he always intended. And when we do that, not only is the world changed for the best, but we are changed. We are transformed into a new being. <clears throat> and I just love you guys so much. I genuinely believe what I, that. And I have seen so much evidence of that taking place in my life that I'm just certain it's true for everybody. Uh, again, it's a choice for everybody because it really is about relationship. It's not something that can be forced on you. You have to see that and understand how much you're loved and then be willing uh, to accept the relationship and to participate in relationship God offers us. <clears throat> Again, I love you guys so much, and I hope you've been enjoying uh, these little videos, and I really look forward to the time when we can be back together soon. So bye-bye for now. <laughs>